I think our study is important because it addresses a commonly encountered situation in clinical surgery. We're about ready to operate on a patient and they say, oh yeah, doc, uh, I might be allergic to penicillin, I'm not sure. And then the easiest thing for the doctor to do, rather than cancel the case, is simply say, we'll go to the default non-beta-lactam uh, antibiotics, uh, and that will obviate the uh, penicillin allergy problem. But the question came up, is that really as good as having a beta-lactam antibiotic as part of our anti-wound infection strategy? The, an the clinical uh, literature about this is somewhat divided. We performed a retrospective cohort study of patients undergoing elective colectomy surgery from January 2013 to February 2018 in the Michigan Surgical Quality Collaborative, a collaborative of 70 academic and community hospitals throughout the state of Michigan which share patient information to improve surgical outcomes and patient safety. This is funded by the Blue Cross Blue Shield Network of Michigan. We included patients over the age of 18 who were identified using 25 CPT codes as seen in Supplementary Table 1. With only patients receiving skip ASHP recommended antibiotic regimens were included in the study. We analyzed close to 10,000 cases. 95% of these cases received beta-lactam antibiotics while 5% received non-beta-lactam antibiotics. The surgical side infection for those receiving beta-lactam antibiotics was 6% while the infection rate in the group that received non-beta-lactam antibiotics was 10%. We used a mixed effects logistic regression to estimate the effect of the type of antibiotic on surgical side infection rate, controlling for patient level fixed effects and the hospital random effects. As seen in this model, after controlling for several factors, the receipt of non-beta-lactam regimen was associated with a significantly higher odds of surgical site infection, and interestingly, the effect of mechanical bowel preparation with oral antibiotics was protective against surgical site infection. From a pharmacy perspective, I think there's uh, three main key points that help um, explain why we see these results. I think first, number one, um, when you consider the administration time of the beta-lactams versus non-beta-lactams, they're very different. Uh, drugs like vancomycin, genomycin, fluoroquinolones, they require a longer infusion time of like 30 to 60 minutes, um, which can be harder to ad administer and get good uh, tissue concentrations at the time the, the incision is being made. Beta-lactams can generally be giving over like slow pushes, they're given much faster, which um, is potentially one reason why we're seeing these results in that you're able to get good skin concentrations. Similarly, I think the kinetics of the drugs are very different. Beta-lactams generally have pretty good tissue concentration, they get good uh, t concentrations of different fluids, um, whereas drugs like, like I said, amino glycosides and some other drugs may not get as good of tissue concentration, so that could be a second reason. Then lastly, you have different spectrums of activity between beta-lactams and some of the non-beta-lactams. Um, some of the non-beta-lactams like fluoroquinolones and amino glycosides don't cover the skin bugs like streptococcus and staphylococcus very well. Um, as, as much as like some of the cephalosporin uh, beta-lactam antibiotics. Approximately 10% of the U.S. population has a penicillin allergy label on their chart. However, over 95% of those patients when evaluated can safely tolerate penicillins. Much of the misclassification occurs due to remote reactions in childhood or potentially adverse drug events that are misclassified as allergic reactions. Moreover, approximately 80% of patients can safely tolerate penicillins in just 10 years after the event occurred. With the cost of penicillin allergy testing and evaluation ranging from $200 to $500, instituting penicillin allergy testing protocols for high-risk colectomy patients may be a cost-effective way to increase the use of beta-lactam antibiotics. In conclusion, our findings suggest that surgeons prescribe beta-lactam antibiotic prophylaxis whenever possible, reserving non-beta-lactam antibiotics in, for those rare patients with true allergies or clinical indications for non-beta-lactam antibiotics. I would like to thank our team, the surgeon champions and nurses of the Michigan Surgical Quality Collaborative, Blue Cross Blue Shield Michigan for their generous support of our collaborative, and the University of Michigan Institute for Healthcare Policy and Innovation Fellowship Program.